It's been a while since I've done a cheap luxury car video, so today I thought I would talk about 10 in particular that you can buy for under £10,000. All 10 offer great luxury for the money. If you want to see different price ranges of this video, then do hit the like button at 1,000 likes and I'll keep making more luxury car videos. And hit subscribe if you're one of these 77% of people that aren't subscribed watching this video. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Let's get started with a car from Nissan's luxury brand, Infiniti, the QX70, a compact luxury crossover SUV which actually took similar design cues to a car it's roguely related to, the Nissan 370Z. Both cars took aesthetic inspiration from sharks, just that the 370Z took inspiration for the profile, while this took inspiration for the headlights. Behind those headlights is a 3 litre turbocharged V6 block, making 234 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 8 seconds, not rapid but not bad for an SUV. These were renamed from the FX. X70 in 2014 to the QX70 and are very well equipped from a tech perspective with the focus being more sporty than simple luxury. Again it gets features out of the 370Z like the instrument cluster. The only real problem with these though is that they've stolen a lot from the Nissan parts bin so the finish isn't as good as a lot of the other cars on this list and DPF blocking has been known too. These start at around the £6,500 mark and Tanker gets you into a 2015 model with 90k on it. The autobiography line within the Jaguar Land Rover group is generally their most luxurious spec and though the L322 Range Rover is pretty old at this point, it still offers a pretty insane level of luxury. You'll probably be getting a 4.4 litre twin turbocharged V8 block within our price range, which puts up 308 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.5 seconds, and I promise, this is the last SUV on the list for those of you who aren't into them. Autobiographies come with a great finish, with super nice materials and decent technology for quite an old car, that you can get a post-2011 facelift within our price range. The rear seats come with an entertainment package, but that package was even crazier with the Ultimate Edition, which got two iPads instead, as well as a metal laptop desk and electric reclining seats, as well as a fridge between the rear seats. These are listed anywhere from around £6,000, and 10 k is enough for a 2011 model with 100 k on the clock. The auto box was sadly known for a lot of issues, and generally these aren't known to be the most reliable cars. I've banged on about the Skoda Superb Lauren and Clement before now, and I think there's a pretty massive generational divide. My younger audience might not know about the Skoda jokes of old, like how do you overtake take a Skoda, walk, or how do you double the value of a Skoda, chuck a penny in it. Because back in the day Skoda was not the brand it is today and broadly there hasn't been enough effort put into marketing how much better they are now. The Superb however in Lauren and Clement spec is the equivalent of a sleeper in the luxury car world. The only problem if you're a Londoner is that you'll only get yourself a non ULES compliant TDI engine for our price range, the 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 which puts out 187 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 7.4 seconds. The trim and finish in these is above anything you would expect in a Skoda, including nice leather with embroidery and all the rest, plus you get umbrellas in the doors like a Rolls Royce and benefit from Skoda's Simply Clever initiative throughout. These run you around 3k at the bottom end and 10k gets you a high mileage 2016 model. Next up we have a full size luxury car which surprisingly has also been credited with being one of the best to drive as well as just be driven around in. It's the X351 Jaguar XJ, currently the final extra generation we've seen out on the roads. It's an Ian Callum design which is of course to its credit and it has been luxurious enough to be the car used for multiple British Prime Ministers in its bomb-proof Sentinel spec, in fact all of them from David Cameron to Boris Johnson, which might actually put you off it to be honest depending on which way you swing politically. But less about politics, let's talk about the engine, a 3 litre twin turbocharged V6 block which makes 271 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.2 seconds. Now we can't get an autobiography within our price range, but we can get close enough with a premium luxury model which still offers a lot of the luxury spec you need, despite the reliability being similarly bad to the Land Rover. Over. These run you around 5k at the bottom end and double that gets you a 2013 model with around 70k on the clock. A pretty typical jump for one of my videos now from a Skoda to a Jaguar to a Maserati which I'd say says more about the Maserati than the Skoda personally because you can grab yourself a Ghibli for under 10k nowadays although that's around the minimum you'll find them listed for and you'll be getting a 2014 model with 100k on the clock for that kind of money. That's not bad for an executive saloon from a more luxurious or exotic manufacturer like Maserati even if they are known for their depreciation. These come with a 3 litre turbocharged V6 block which puts out 271 brake horsepower taking them to 60 in 6.1 seconds and it shares the same architecture as its equivalent Quattroporte. They're well equipped from a sports perspective with the LSD vented discs and four piston calipers and a low drag coefficient to help with the fuel economy and acceleration. Like the earlier Quattroporte these actually got a luxury Neiman Marcus edition for the 2014 Christmas gift book catalogue with special aesthetics both outside and in. They are known for some clutch problems as well as slow automatic transmissions at times though generally 
they're also known to be quite nice to drive. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. And let me know in the comments down below, what is the most luxurious car you have ever been in? I love a luxury Lexus and the LS600 H is one of the most impressive cars to have come out of the Tahara plant as a proper full-size luxury car built to take on the class leader, the Mercedes S-Class. It was so good as a luxury car that it was selected to become an open top model for the wedding of Albert II, Prince of Monaco back in 2011 and the royal couple literally used it as their transport for the special day before the car was put on display in a museum in Monaco. And I'll be real, if it's good enough for a prince, who am I to judge at under 10k? Part of this is helped by having a super wafty powertrain too, a 5 litre V8 block combined with electric power to produce 439 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.1 seconds matching the Ghibli. The start at around the 5k mark and double that gets you a 2010 model with 100k on it and they're known to be super reliable too outside of the batteries as you can see by this one listed even cheaper than 5k with almost 350,000 miles on it. I recently had the chance to properly check out the F01 BMW 750 Li and I must say this thing is a proper land yacht. Every door you open or close, every compartment you check, everything just feels tank-esque, thicker, stronger and more likely to survive in the event of a bomb. They can even be bomb proof with a high security model which was built with undercarriage armour to reduce the impact of a bomb as well as a bunch of armour plating, bulletproof glass and even a fresh air supply system with a compartment that fits two machine guns in the centre console. These come with a 4.4 litre twin turbo charged V8 engine producing 401 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 5.1 seconds, a second faster than the Lexus. Having spent a good amount of time chilling in the rear seats, I love being able to recline, get a massage, watch TV and hear no road noise and be in total control of my own comfort. 9k is the minimum you'll find these listed for and 10k is enough for a 2013 model with 9,000 miles on it. Main complaints are around eye drive and suspension failures with this specific car. The D3 Audi S8 is readily available within our price range and in my books is a little bit of a sleeper given it's not the most aggressive looking Audi S car but comes with a pretty insane level of performance, a crazy cool engine and a slightly greater focus on sportiness on the interior than simply luxury like the other cars on this list. That engine is a 5.2 litre V10 block which produces 443 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.9 seconds, helped of course by it being a quattro as you'd expect. There was no RS8 so this was a range topper for the A8 and that engine is often said to be similar to the one you'll find in the Gallardo, when in reality it's actually more similar to the typical 4.2 litre V8 Audi you've used in many cars with a couple of extra cylinders. £5,000 will get you into one of these and 10k gets you a 2006 model with 100,000 miles on the clock. Most problems are electrical or suspension related with a couple of mechanical problems too around the inlet manifold. Only recently has it become more common for the Bentley Continental Flying Spur to be available for under £10,000, a lot of car for that kind of money. It's a car that was built with mass production in mind on the same platform as the Continental G. GT, but for people that prefer to be driven rather than drive. It is still a nice car to drive though, especially given how comfortable it really is with that adaptive air suspension and continuous damping control, pretty advanced for a car that hit the market in 2005. It definitely has the most wafty engine on this list, as well as the most powerful, a 6 litre twin turbocharged W12 block, which makes 552 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.9 seconds. These come with a super cool interior and those rear seats are where you want to be, with the option of a fridge, then the reclining, heated and cooled seat. Main problems owners have are the insane running costs though and engines are genuinely pretty reliable but mad expensive they do go wrong. These start at around £7,000 now and 10k is enough for a 2006 model with 100k on the clock. Taking the top spot it only makes sense that we get the market leader, the gold standard for full size luxury cars and in its longest limousine spec the Mercedes S500L from the W221 generation which you can actually get in both pre and post 2009 facelift meaning you can also get both engine options. Initially these came with a 5.5 litre block but after that face if they switched over to a 4.7 litre twin turbocharged V8 block, producing 428 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in a list topping time of 4.8 seconds. After the face if these got additional tech, including stuff that remains options on average modern Mercedes. But most importantly with these, the finish and build quality is absolutely sublime compared to so many other luxury cars, which is why the S classes always end up as the class leaders. Compare these to any other Mercedes even, and they're in a different league. To get into one of these, you'll need to spend around four and a half thousand pounds at bottom end and 10 it will get you into a 2012 model with high mileage. They're not bulletproof with known electrical and transmission issues as well as air suspension problems. And so there we have it, 10 luxury cars for under 10k. If you enjoyed it, do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. Massive thanks to the patrons for their support, you guys as well for watching. If you want to see some more slightly more expensive luxury cars, then click on screen right here.